Father, in Jesus' name, we thank and we praise you for your mighty acts. We thank and praise you for your power. We thank and praise you for your presence. And now we ask, oh God, that as we go forward in your word, God, you would give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, minds to understand, hands to do the work. God, I ask that we see you more visibly. So please take the scales off of our eyes that we can see you clearly. God, unclog our ears that we may hear you more audibly that we will not lean to our understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge you. God, touch our hands, that we not be so quick to do our will, hallelujah, but we'll be able to do what you want in the mighty name of Jesus. God, then finally fix our heart. Help us to hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you. God, I feel your presence even now in this place. We give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. One verse. I feel real churchy, EJ. I feel real churchy. And some of you who don't know what that means, that, that, that simply means it's something brewing on the inside that I cannot explain. I, I feel like crying, but ain't nobody did nothing to me. I feel like running and ain't nobody chasing me. I feel like dancing and the drums ain't playing. I wish I had somebody that knew that there was something on the inside that's working on my outside and that's creating a change in my life. And I'm so glad that 2020 is gone and that we're still standing in 2021. And if anybody can testify like me that the devil thought he had us, Chris, but is there anybody in here that can give God the victory that we got away? You ought to be able to give God a I got away praise. There has to be somebody in here that can say, thank God, I got away. Maybe you didn't have the coronavirus, but I know many people that caught the coronavirus and are still alive. If you happen to be here, a person that has had the coronavirus uh, either in the room uh, either on zoom uh, or on facebook you want to give god praise that you're still alive some people will say preacher what the bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord and that's all right but if i can just be real just for a couple of minutes uh, i got some kids that's on the line i got some children that's on the line they haven't made Jesus their choice. And is there any parents that love their babies? You ought to make some noise. Any, any grandparents, any great-grandparents, any aunties, uncles that love you ought to give God praise. If you still got a hand on your baby. And I want to be around to see all of my children saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Am I the only one? So it's not that I'm worried about dying. It's not that I'm afraid to die. But is there anybody that can testify? I'm not quite ready to go. Evangelist Lala, everybody talking about going to heaven. They, want to, they don't want to do what it takes to get there. And so I want everybody to know that you got to be saved. Sanctified. And filled with the Holy Ghost to see Jesus. See, I can preach a sermon about how he came and how they put down uh, palms and, and how they threw down their cloaks and, and how they arrested him and how they drug him from judgment hall to judgment hall. But it don't mean anything if you don't believe anything. In so many years, we've heard the same story in Matthew 28 and we still went out and sinned in God's face. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that this morning. Y'all want me to be all flowery and make you think it's all good and all cute. Service is almost over. I got exactly about eight minutes to be done. So this ain't an all day message. But I want to tell you, listen to me. This is a very serious state of being. In Matthew 28, I need you to read it for yourself. In Matthew 28, very, very specifically, in verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power. Somebody say all power. 
is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Look at the, look at the assignment. He says, and go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Here's the third assignment, teaching them to observe all things and whatsoever I commanded you, watch this, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Ask your neighbor, priority or majority? Priority or majority? Somebody say priority. Priority are the things that we are accountable for, the things that we must do. How many of us know that we are bound by our priorities? Can I get a witness in here? Let's talk it. Let's, let's run real quick because I'm done. Uh, let's run real quick. Okay, parents got a priority to take care of their children. Am I, am I t- y'all talk back to Pastor Do. All right, Facebook and Zoom, the people in the room nodding at me, but they ain't saying nothing. How many of us know that it is our responsibility until they reach 18 to 21? It's our responsibility. It's our priority to take care of our kids. But how many of us know that we can take care of our kids from birth to 21 and they still disrespect us? Still dishonor us. Still don't listen to us. Somebody say priority over majority. Isn't it funny how we will send our kids to school but won't send them to church? Isn't it funny how we can make them do homework but won't make them read the Bible? Isn't it funny how we can make sure they good good grades but don't have good conduct? Y'all not saying that. I'm talking about priority over majority. Isn't it funny how that same child that you loved on, that you fed, that you put in your house, gave them hot water and and electricity. Alicia's so spoiled, she don't know what a bad day is. Y'all not saying, anybody know about coming up on the rough side of the mountain? Anybody know what it's like to, you know, good fella, focus, hope. Y'all not saying nothing, government cheese. Y'all not saying nothing, food stamps. They don't know what a food stamp is. I'm talking about priority over the majority. I've come to find out that it is not our priority to talk about the story. It's our priority to be the story. Pastor, what you talking about being the story? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. The question I had for you to, this morning is what's new about you? What's new? What's new? What's new? What's new about you? I mean, you know, you done been there and done that. You you got the T-shirt and you wrote the book. Come on now. If they look you up in the dictionary, that's you talking about some, hey. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Jesus Christ made it his priority to sit next to his father when his father looked down on the earth. And his father said that the sin of the earth came up and it stank in his nostrils. It is our priority, somebody say, to clean the house from the inside out that's priority number one is is clean the house from the inside out priority number two is get up from there somebody say get up from there the bible says that they beat him they pierced him nails in his hands nails in his feet put him on a wooden stick sharon he willingly said lama lama sabatini He raised the question, why hast thou forsaken me? Is there anybody in this room, anybody on Zoom, anybody on Facebook ever felt like they've been forsaken? It happened to Jesus first. Somebody say, get over it in Jesus' name. Somebody say, let it go in Jesus' name. Somebody say, let it go in Jesus' name. I dare somebody to scream out, get over it in Jesus' name. They did it to Jesus first. They're going to do it to you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but out of them all, God will deliver. Notice the criteria in your priority. If you're righteous, that's when they're going to dog you. Why are you tripping? Because they're lying on you and treating you bad and, and making you feel. It's because you're doing the right thing, getting the wrong reaction. But if they persecuted them before us, so shall we be persecuted but look at the deliverance he says out of them all god will deliver stop looking at the persecution and start looking at your victory it's more people in the room priority who want to talk about the problem complain about the problem get on facebook with the i'm so sick of people putting their business on facebook it don't make no sense of why people would use that tool to put all of your pertinent personal business out on the streets and then you want God to move that's the move of the majority 
I said priority over majority. He, he says, he says, he says, and Jesus came to them saying, now is given unto me. All power is in my hand. In order to get God's power, number one, you got to have his presence. You can't get God's power without his presence. I'm tired of people talking about some. I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me and you still cussing people out. I can do all things through Christ and strengthen me and you still hating people and ain't forgave nobody. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me and you won't forgive the person that you see every day, but you want forgiveness. Somebody say in order for you to be uh, in your priority, you got to have God's presence. You got to have his presence. Number two, you got to ask for permission. If, if, if you want this to be a priority thing, you got to ask for permission. Look at what it says in Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first. But seek ye first. Somebody say, seek ye first. That means go to God first. I'm, I'm so tired of people making God in, a, in addition to. Oh, come on. Now, anybody in the room? Okay, let me talk to Facebook and Zoom because they're just nodding at me in this room. Facebook and Zoom, hallelujah. Uh, anybody know what it feels like to get a problem and you call your BFF before you pray? Y'all y'all ain't saying nothing to Pastor Dude. Don't talk my hair back. Come on now. It's been gone for a number of years. Don't talk it back today. There are some people right now who need the presence of God and got to get God's permission. There are some folk who want to walk out on ministry uh, because you don't like what somebody said or did. If God planted you in that ministry, you better be still and know that he's God. There's some folk want to walk out on marriages. If God gave them to you, he says for better or worse. Rich or poor, sickness, son, and health. Y'all not saying nothing to me in here. Y'all looking at me. It's some folk in the room want to walk out on your job. You better not do it before you get another one. He says, if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. I'm talking about getting God's permission. Some people in here make it the, the, the majority rule. I don't like what they said. I don't like what they did, so I'm out of here. You better be careful because you don't know where you're going. may be worse than where you at. Permission, provision, and the last thing he told me to give you is his provision. Hmm. Somebody say God's provision. If, if, if it's our priority to walk in God's provision, Deuteronomy 31 and 6, and I'm done. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, be strong. Somebody say, be strong. I'm so sick of these weakling so-called Christians. I can't take it no more. Get off my phone. Yes, get off my phone, Pastor. I don't know what love want me to do. I don't know what love want me to say. I don't quite understand what I'm supposed to do with my life. Negro, get on your knees and pray. And stay there till he bless you. Sis, get off my back whining. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. She said it. She did. And I don't like it. And I don't want. Get on your knees. The word of God says cast all your cares on. I'm talking about priority over the majority. There's so many of us who want God to move, but you got to do something first. He starts it. He finishes it. But you got to work the middle. He's the alpha and he's the omega. The beginning and the end. But you got to work the middle. Pastor, do what does it mean to work the middle? Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith. Let me tell you something. It's the substance of a thing hoped for. But the evidence of things not seen. It is your priority to walk by faith and not by sight. See, it's the majority who just want to get along, to be along, to go along, to walk along. I mean, you know, what you doing? Whatever you're doing. Where you going? I'm riding with you. How you feel? I'm sick. I'm sick too. I'm so tired of people going along just to get along. I, I, I came to tell you, the Bible says you are the lights of the world. A city that cannot be hid, but set. A, I wish I had. Where my light set? Where my light set? Who, who, where my light set? Where my light set? Are oh, y'all still sitting down on Pastor Do? Where my light set? They tried to put your light out, but you're still here. They tried to put your light out, but you're still here. Said I do, but they didn't, but you're still here. Said they would, but they didn't. You still, where my lights at? Can my lights make some noise? <laughs> Heard a songwriter say, walk in the light. Beautiful light. Shined all about us from morning to night. I wish I had somebody in here that could understand. He says, you got to be strong. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, be strong and of good courage. And then it says, fear not. Everybody's scared of Corona. 
I'm sorry, can the Bible lie? Is the Bible wrong? Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, be strong. Be of good courage. Fear not. The next time the devil whispers in your ear for you to be afraid, you tell him you will lie. Get behind me. The next time you feel like you ain't got no strength, I'm telling you to go in the strength of the Lord. The next time you feel like people are not for you and you feel like you're kind of surrounded, you be of good courage. Because it's look at what it says. It says, be strong. Be of good courage. Fear not. Be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is with you. Doth go with, he does go with thee and he will not fail thee nor will he forsake thee. I'm going to hang my hat here. It's the priority and the majority of the believer to let their light so shine before men that they may see their good works. We're surrounded, my brothers and sisters, with men and women, boys and girls who want to talk about Jesus coming. They want to talk about uh, how he went from judgment hall uh, to judgment hall. They, they only want to talk about uh, how uh, they marched him uh, before the Sanhedrin. They, they want to talk about uh, how they uh, spit on him and how they mocked him. Uh, but how many of us know uh, that you got to go through the same thing uh, that Jesus went through? Uh, and I came to ask somebody, uh, don't go with the majority. Uh, make it your priority uh, to square your shoulders uh, and to be strong and of good courage. Uh, have I got a witness? in here. Uh, see, the unbeliever uh, is one who wants it easy. Uh, they want everything to come to them uh, on a silver platter. Uh, but my Bible tells me to work uh, while it is day. Uh, for when night comes, uh, no man can work. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that's going to make it that priority uh, to make Jesus uh, Lord of all? Uh, look at what he did. Uh, he came down uh, through 40 and two generations uh, stopped off in Bethlehem uh, look at what he did uh, he made his way uh, down the road uh, of the Via Dolorosa uh, look at what he did uh, he willingly put a cross uh, on his shoulders uh, and he made up his mind uh, that no matter uh, come what may uh, I'm going all the way uh, from my father uh, can I remind you uh, he said say Several times I didn't come to do my own will, but I came to do the will of my Father. I came to remind you that serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Have I got a witness? Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Look at what he did. He made his way uh, to the point that he was tired. Uh, he came down that road. Uh, he fell down. Uh, I came to tell somebody every now and then uh, you might fall, uh, but you don't got to stay down. Uh, God will send some help. Uh, come here, Simon Peter. Uh, look at the black man uh, that came over uh, to pick up the cross uh, and help him carry it. Uh, I came to tell somebody uh, if you wait on the Lord uh, if you wait on the Lord uh, he will uh, uh, come to your rescue uh, he made his way uh, he laid down uh, his own life uh, the Bible says uh, he had the power uh, to lay his life down uh, and he had the power to take it up again uh, when you give your life uh, to Jesus Christ uh, don't worry uh, about dying because in the morning the same way he got up you'll get up to i need a witness that know that he hung his head before he closed his eyes he said father father forgive them for they know not what they do he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders he gave up the ghost somebody say he died somebody say he died somebody say he died but early early he didn't stay dead somebody say early 
Hallelujah. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. It's your priority. Don't go with the majority. Live for Jesus while you got a chance. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yes. I'm so glad he got up. He got up for the drug dealer. He got up for the whoremonger. He got up for the crackhead. He got up for the alcoholic. He got up for the liar. He got up for the backbiter. He got up for every one of our sins that held us down. You ought to get up and say, thank you, Jesus. You ought to get up and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for getting up for me. Y'all trying to pity pat me. Don't try to pity pat me. Had he not got up, you would be on your way to a sinner's hell. Had he not got up, you wouldn't be able to ask for forgiveness at any time of your life. I'm so glad that he got up and he gave me the power to live holy. He gave me the power to live righteous. You know how I got it? He lives in me. Is there anybody here that don't need an organ? Don't need a drama, don't need a radio to give God a praise because he lives in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. If you got Jesus down on the inside, say yeah. doors of the church are open.